Hi, it's Aina. Welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm doing the mid-year book tag. I'm a little late because I've been on vacation. If you didn't know, I went to Poland and then I had a week at home with a friend from the US and then I left to the US to visit her. So I've been busy. But here we are with a very popular video. I've watched a few and I loved it, so I think it's time for me to do my own. I'm going to start with a little wrap up of like the analytics of my reading this year. So I'm going to find that and then we'll talk about it. So, so far this year I have read 28 books, the NF1, technically two. I started one book last year, brought it with me into January and decided I didn't want to read it anymore. So we're ignoring that. The NF1 book read 28. And I'm pretty proud of that. Like, that's not bad. I'm gonna see for 2022. In 2022, I read 35 books. So, I'm halfway through the year and I'm already on 28. Pretty good. Yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna go through the rest of these. I've mostly given 5 stars. Because the, on this I can do, like, points. That's not the right way of explaining. Whatever. We're gonna ignore that and go into some questions. I have taken these questions from other YouTubers. Everyone does the same ones. I don't know who started it, sorry. But like a lot of different people have done this video and if you google the mid-year book tag I think you're gonna find it. Maybe there's a creator there. I'm not really sure. I have 14 questions to answer. 14 different things to show you. I'm going to say I have a few options for each question because I couldn't choose just one and also I'm trying to not show the same book for every single one which is a little hard so that's why I have a wider selection of books to talk about so let's get started I haven't posted my June wrap-up yet so you haven't heard me talk about all of these books but it's fun it's fun let's let's get started so I have my phone to look at the questions so if I look down, that's why. It's probably obvious, but I just had to put that out there. The first question is, the best book you've read so far this year? For this, I have three options. Firstly, Crooked Kingdom by Leigh Bardugo. If you know anything about me, you would know that I love Leigh Bardugo. She's my favorite author, and I love the Grishaverse. And this one is definitely the best book in the whole universe. I love this book with all my heart. It's there's so much going on. I love the found family, the friendships, relationships, the heartbreak. It's a very sad book and it's also interesting. There's action packed. There's so much going on and I love that there's no time jump. Like you in this book you like right after Six of Crows. There's not like a two years later which I feel like a lot of series are. You just go right into the next story and it's so fun. So I highly recommend reading this book. I fell in love with every single character and their relationships with each other. Both like romantic relationships and platonic relationships. It's just so good. The writing, the story, the plot, the development of the characters, everything is so good. This is my favorite book in the world. The next one I have is different genre. I had to put a romance book in there as well. Things We Never Got Over. I annotated this book. Well, I tabbed it. I didn't really write anything. I wasn't really planning on doing that, but I did it. I fell in love with Knox and Naomi and the story. I did a reading vlog of this and I talked about the way it made me feel. Reading this book was just a, such a different experience than reading a lot of other books because I physically felt everything. My chest was hurting, I was crying, I felt so much. And it's such a weird feeling, but it's also an amazing feeling when a book really, really gets to you. And I feel like that's what this book did. The writing was beautiful. Like, Knox was an asshole at points, but I also fell in love with him. And I think it's very pretty. So... The third book is coming out soon. I'm just gonna put that out there. You probably know. But I love this. Love Lucy's score. 
this is like obviously this is my favorite book so there are five star reads i didn't mention that but, like you probably understand and then the last book that i would consider one of my favorites so far this year probably not a surprise to anyone fourth wing by rebecca yaros i was a little late to it but i still read it at a decent time usually i'm very late to books but this one everyone loved it so i decided to get it honestly didn't think i would love it as much as i did because i feel like when a book is very hyped up i make i set too high expectations for it and then i get disappointed but with this i didn't think that it would affect me this much but i fell in love with everything in this book the storyline for the, like the first three chapters maybe i was a little bored and i was like what's the point but then everything happened and i fell in love with the characters and the story i was a little confused at times as to how this is going to be a series but at the end definitely understood it and i'm so excited to continue this series if you haven't read it you probably have because it's like the most popular book in the book community right now but this is about violet who is in an academy i guess for like dragon riding she finds her dragon makes friends things happen and you should read it i love this book so much another five star read the next question is best sequel you've read so far this year for this i had two obviously i have to say crooked kingdom it's the sequel to six of crows already told you how much i love this i'm gonna move on to the next one like i have to change it up a bit so i had to mention another one as well one of us is next by karen and mcmanus mcmanus i don't know how to say it but anyways this is like a mystery ya mystery kind of and i love her writing i love her storytelling i love the simpleness of the books while also keeping it interesting i read one of us is lying loved it read this liked it even more so i'm excited to continue the rest of her books read another one didn't like it as much but this series i don't know how to explain it because it's very simple what is happening with the lighting like what is going on excuse me thank you it's just a very easy read that's is that a person it's a dog but then it's a person it's very awkward please don't sit outside go oh he's looking let's move the camera i don't know please stay inside my neighbor Is he gonna stay inside? Did he come outside to look at the dog or is he like planning on being outside? Cause that's a little annoying. <sighs> I'm afraid that he's gonna look at me through the window because I can't see and I can't like stare into his window. But, like if you come outside again and you see my camera in the window, that's a little weird. And it's awkward. So we're gonna try again. Please don't make this weird. Let me film my video in peace because I need to get this up. I don't remember what I was saying. But I like this. It's a good sequel. This is about the little sister of one of the characters in One of Us is Lying and her friend group. And now it's going dark again. Don't know why it does that. Question number three. New release you haven't read yet but want to. Obviously, I have to mention my queen, Ali Hazelwood. Love theoretically. I pre-ordered it, got it the day it came out. I got it the day before it came out, actually. I don't know how that happened. I was very confused, but I got it. I haven't read it yet because I've been on vacation, and before vacation, I just had a lot of things to do. But I'm very excited because I always love everything she writes. I think I've given all of her books five stars. Uh, so I clearly have high expectations to this. Very excited. Don't know what it's about. It's probably 
women in STEM because that's kind of her thing one thing I have to say a lot of people don't like that her books are the same over and over again because they are and I get it but that's what I like about them I like the comfort I feel because I know what I'm expecting and I know what I will get when I get into one of her books she is releasing a book that isn't like that so I'm excited and scared for that but it's just a very easy thing for me with her books and yeah I got really bad headaches her books are easy to read so I don't get headaches while reading her books which is great it just allows me to sit down relax and don't worry about anything so I love her I love her and I'm very very excited another new release is Reckless by Elsie Silver. I haven't read any of the books in this series, but I'm so excited to. I'm a country girl, don't know if you knew that. So this is like perfect for me. I don't know what every book is about. I know the first one is like a bull rider. I think this one is as well. Yes. And it's like a country romance. People usually listen to like a country playlist while reading this. And I, it's such a vibe. Such a vibe. I just want to do it, and I'm so excited. And I love the cover. Next question is most anticipated release for the second half of the year. So I'm obviously, like I already mentioned it, the third book in the Knockmat series comes out in September, I think. Things we left behind. Is that the right word? Yeah, things we left behind about Lucien and Sloan. And I'm so excited for their story. If you watched my Knock Out series reading vlog, when Lucien was introduced, like the first thing I said was he should have his own book. He is getting his own book. And the way they've teased the relationship between Lucien and Sloane in this book and in this book, the second book in the series, I'm just so excited to figure out why are they like that? What happened between them? And how are they gonna end up? Like, what's gonna happen? I just need to know. So September, I will be buying that book as soon as it comes out and I'm reading it. So be excited to hear my opinions on that. I have high expectations for it. Which probably isn't that good, but like... You gotta set some expectations sometimes. Make sure people live up to your standards. Or not. Another book I'm excited for is Iron Flame, the second book in this little series. Like I said, this book really surprised me and I fell in love so I need to know what happens and the ending, like, you can't just end it like that, I need to know, please. I need the book now. I can't wait, I need it. Question number five biggest disappointment this is a little scary talking about how much i dislike books i'm afraid then when did i do it i don't even remember early this year i started reading cersei by madeline miller i'm a little over halfway through the book dnf it if you can tell and um, i'm on page 199 and i hated it absolutely hated it couldn't continue and I don't like DNF books but I had to because first of all incredibly boring nothing ever happened I can't tell you a single plot detail about this like what was the point like there's not a story at all like did you even think through it I'm sorry to be mean she's a good writer not with this book like she she wrote the song of Achilles which I loved loved it absolutely loved it I cried I smiled it was one of my favorite books from part of my life. Absolutely horrible. Like, I'm sorry, it shouldn't be so harsh, but... I've never been more disappointed. Is it the worst book I've read? And I don't read it. Horrible, honestly. Absolutely awful. Nothing. The character... All of the characters, like, there's nothing interesting. The storyline, nothing happened. Like, she did so much, but, like, nothing happened. I was like, what's the point? I don't get it. Don't be mad at me. You probably will. Like, 
hated it. Wait, is the lighting weird? Or am my camera just stupid? Because I don't understand. Because that looks weird. It usually doesn't look like that. If you can't tell, this is awkward. But I can. I'm gonna move on. The biggest surprise this year. I have a few. The first one I can think of is Magnolia Parks. Honestly, I haven't finished it yet. I mean, not even halfway through it. I'm on. Oh, don't do that. Page 153. I stopped reading it because I went on vacation, so for the past three weeks, didn't have the chance to read it. <sighs> but I think I did a video, I haven't posted it yet, where I talked about this. You're gonna hear more about my thoughts in that and also in my wrap up. I didn't think I would like it because people say it's kind of like a British Gossip Girl and Gossip Girl is not for me. I watched five episodes and then I stopped. That's not usually like a show or the type of thing I would watch. I'm a little different with books so I decided to give it a chance anyways. And oh my god was I surprised. I am so in love with everything. The writing in this is so beautiful. Like I've never seen anything like it. And the characters are so well thought out and there's so much depth to them it's definitely a very toxic relationship but it's so interesting and like you you're getting into their heads and i love that and i don't care what anyone say i'm rooting for magnolia and bj i know they're toxic i know they're bad for each other but they're like, there's magnolia and bj this is my baby my prized possession I love it, and uh, I wasn't expecting to, I thought I would be bored, so I bought the rest of the series as well, had to, like this def definitely tired me out a bit, I had to stop and take a break for my own mental health sake, because this is a lot, but I loved it and I wouldn't trade it for anything, and then Honorary mentions. Don't really need to mention it, but I'm gonna do it anyways. These two. I tried reading classics for the first time this year. The Picture of Dorian Gray gave it five stars. Pride and Prejudice gave it four stars. Didn't think classics would be for me. But this, one of my favorite books. This one, honestly thought I would hate it. Thought I would be bored. But I love it. I love the relationship. I love the writing. I love the characters. I don't know why. Because like, I feel like that's a book... I usually wouldn't like but there's something about it that just made me feel and like that's the best feeling when reading with a book like absolutely makes you feel I love that makes sense like this surprised me because I didn't think classics would be for me I'm very excited to watch this movie starring Ben Barnes yay next question let's move on favorite new author debut or new to you so I'm gonna do new authors because i don't know any debut authors and if i do like i don't know if they're new i never know if people have published books before so we're gonna do the first one lucy score who i'm absolutely in love with these two books some of my favorites tab them both bought two of her other books while on vacation so i'm excited to read those as well because for some stupid reason they're not available here that might be with like the republishing thing, I, like that's why maybe. But I got some new Lucy Score books because I fell in love with her writing, her way of developing plot and characters. I'm very excited to continue more of her books. And I also want to mention Lynn Painter. I read the do-over and better than the movies. Did I mention this as my favorite? Then, but this is also a favorite of this year. Her books are very simple, which I like, and they're just so easy to read. The stories are, like, they make me feel while not being too much. Like, I don't know if that's a good way of describing it, but, like, that's how I felt. So I'm very, this, I don't like this. Why is, why is this so big? Like, stop it. But I love her, and I'm so excited to continue more of her books as well. Bought her book on vacation as well, actually. Next question. I don't know what I'm doing, so we need to just move on. Newest fictional crush. I'm gonna go with the obvious one. Satan. Don't know if I'm saying his name right, but I love him. And also, 
less embedded in the movies. That's the type of friend I would have, would have wanted to have in high school and now. I want the West in my life. I don't have much more to say about that, actually. Newest favorite character. The same ones. Satan. Love Violet as well, actually. Wes. Loved Wes. I related a lot to Liz in this book, actually. So maybe I, maybe she's a favorite as well. Who knows? Book that made you cry. I mentioned a few already. Magnolia Parks has made me cry a lot. Like, a lot. Don't know what else to say about it. Because I don't want to spoil it. I don't want to talk about, like, the storyline. But it's very toxic. And there, there's just a lot of things happening. And it made me feel. And it, I cried quite a few times. Probably going to cry even more. I can cry just thinking about it, really. Also, don't know why. Don't remember what made me cry. But th this one... I don't remember what happened, but I know, I remember the feeling. One thing happened and I cried. Don't remember why. Might have to reread. Love this book. And like I already said, in this book I felt so much. I was in pain because this book just crushed me. And not in a bad way. It just, every feeling that the characters had, I felt as well. Like, I don't need the extra heartbreak. But I got it. And it hurt. And I cried. Everything's I forgot to mention the most important. Everything about this book. The ending. I feel so bad. Like, that wasn't supposed to happen. I knew it was gonna happen, but it... No. This one. I cried. Definitely cried. My love. My love. My love. My love. Okay, I've read it. Read it. I'm not gonna tell you what happens. Heartbreaking. Absolutely heartbreaking. I'm not okay anymore. Don't wanna think about that. I'm gonna move on, because I might actually cry. I'm tearing up. This isn't good. I want to reread all of the Grisha verse. I want to reread Crooked Kingdom and break my heart all over again. I'm actually tearing up now. Whew. Let's move on. Book that made you happy. Yes, some happiness. Loath to Love You by Ali Hazelwood is a collection of three novellas. Under One Roof, Stuck With You, Below Zero. I think I gave all five stars. Below Zero is definitely my favorite. Yeah. Oh my god. Can I also mention that it's set in Norway? Like, isn't that super fucking amazing? It made me happy. Like, there, there were sad moments in it. Like, Ali Hazelwood always brings happiness, sadness, heartbreak, anxiety, all of that. But the feeling I felt while reading this book, all of them, I just love them all. I love her way of writing and it makes me happy to read a Ellie Hazelwood book. So I will continue reading all of the books she puts out forever. Question number 12. Most beautiful book you have read or bought this year? I'm gonna do the most beautiful writing and the most beautiful cover because I've seen people do both and I don't want to choose. For writing, Definitely Magnolia Parks. Like I said, it's so different. It's not like everything I've seen before and I loved it. The way she just takes us into the feelings and thoughts of the main characters and also like the side characters. Like you don't see their like it's a dual point of view and you get like both main characters inner thoughts and feelings and I love it and the way it's written is just so different and I'm, I'm so obsessed. This book need to move on. For covers, I actually have three options. Ricochet by Tristan Beccarici. There's something about flowers that I just really love. And it's purple and it's so simple and I love a simple cover. It's beautiful. It's so beautiful. Another one. My camera just stopped. It's really hot actually. It's probably bad. But we're gonna continue filming anyways because we're almost done. 
Flawless by Elsie Silver. I Again, it's a very simple cover, which I love. And it's another flower. Like I said, I love flowers. And I feel like, like the... I haven't read the book, but I know it's about a bull ride. And I feel like this, like... It's a way of taking you into the story without actually spoiling anything. And not just having people on the cover all the fucking time. Because, like... It gets boring. I need something else. I like this. And then... The next one... I actually only bought it because it was pretty. I like the cover. That's why I chose to pick it up. We Are All Constellations by Amy... Bichel, Bichel, whatever. Don't know what the book is about. I know that the cover is gorgeous, so I wanted it on my shelf. Yeah, that's all I have to say about it. Next question is, what books do you need to read before the end of the year? I have a few. Where did I put them? That's my question. Obviously, the new releases I talked about. I really need to finish... No, Stark, Akatar. Haven't read any of them yet and I'm very I own every book so I can just need to pick them up. Wanna do that this year. Same with the Chestnut Spring series. I just wanna read the whole series this year. Probably gonna do that soon. I didn't bring the books over here and I don't want to go get them but I want to read the summer I turn pretty before the summer is over. So I will probably make a vlog of that coming soon I think. Yeah. I think that's the books that are most important to me to finish probably gonna read more but that's the one that's like you have to get it done don't have a choice let's do it the last question is favorite book to movie adaption for this i am choosing enola holmes i watched the movie first not so proud of that, but I did it, and I love it. Enola Holmes is definitely a comfort movie for me. I'm so in love with everything about it. So I had to get the book. And don't come for me for the movie cover. Because it's beautiful. I feel like this cover is better than the original covers. First of all, it's got Henry Cavill, the love of my life. But it's also, I feel like this cover really... It's a picture of Enola's mind in a way. It explains the way... I'm not I'm probably looking too much into it, but I really like it. Yeah, I'm just gonna move on, because I don't know what I'm saying, to be honest. But that's my mid-year book tag. I'm very excited to continue reading for the rest of the year, make a lot of videos, share my thoughts with you. I will see you next time. I hope you enjoy it. Follow me on Instagram, Rule of Books. I am getting back to posting because I disappeared for a while while I was on vacation because I didn't have time to post or take pictures or read. I read one book in the three weeks I was gone. Two? Wait. One or two? Something like that? Yeah. Not my proudest moment, but I did, so... You can also follow me on TikTok. It's in the description. That's all I have to say. See you next time. Peace out, lovers.